Hi, this is about Diablo 2, so we're going to spend the first part of the video in queue waiting to play. Okay, all set. There are many pathways to greatness, but I'm about to show you a way to get Enigma in 24 hours if you're starting the game from level 1, or at least how I did it. I realize that I'm here saying, hey, I did this in 24 hours, a month and a half after the game was released. That may seem a little suspicious, but I have a demanding job, and I make my own background music, so these videos take a while to make. The main goal here is to show you how to get great stuff without spending a lot of time. I've showed you some strategies before, but this time we're going to see those strategies in action. If you can't tell by the background footage, I did all this stuff by making a Hammerdin. Couple of quick things on that. I released my Hammerdin video right before D2 Resurrected came out, and it's very thorough, but it's also a half an hour long. Uh, you know, if that's too long for you, you can always watch it in double speed. I recommend that you start your character off in ladder. Another popular shield for this is the Herald of Zacharoon, which would give you more hammer damage, but you wouldn't teleport as fast, so I don't use it. Anyway, to summarize that video, I think Hammerdens are the best all-around character. Here are the tier lists for Hammerden equipment. I assume you're familiar with the pause button. And in that video, there may or may not have been a song about dueling techniques. Sometimes don't aim luck, but still do concentration hammer. One more thing really quick. One of the dueling techniques I showed you used the skill throw, even though we weren't throwing anything. You can do this in classic D2, and even in the D2R beta. But in the official D2R release, they decided that you cannot use the throw skill unless you have a throwable item. Thanks, game developers. But, fortunately, if you use smite instead of throw, all the mechanics of the technique are the same. So just use smite in that situation. Okay, now that you're up to speed, a lot of people wanted more detail on how to get from a level 1 character starting the game fresh to the epic in-game equipment that I keep flexing in front of you. Like the Enigma, which, let's be honest, is probably the best item in the game. It's a game changer because it gives you teleport and a bunch of other great stuff, but it's really hard to get the stuff you need to make it. I managed to level myself and get Enigma within 24 hours of committed playing time. I accomplished that by just finding my own stuff and trading it in-game. I did it without devoting my entire life to playing the game, and I did it with no donations, with no third-party transactions, and here's how you can do something similar with no filler. My journey began at level 1, on the night the game was released. I wanted to have it easy, so I decided to start out as the Holy Fire Zealot, the speedrunning build. It makes the game stupid easy in normal mode. I did several Countess runs as soon as I could and got most of the runes I needed to make my equipment. Here's my setup at that time. When I put in stat points, I put roughly two thirds of my points into vitality and the rest into dexterity and strength. You want to be on track to get your total strength to around 100 and your total dex to around 160 by level 85. When I got to Nightmare Mode, I finally found some of the four socketed stuff I needed, so I was able to make Spirit Sword, Spirit Shield, and Insight. When I got to level 44, I reset my dude and turned him into a Holy Shock Zealot Paladin. This was not necessary, I was just excited to see that skill in the remastered version. Holy Shock is probably my favorite skill, because it zaps everything in the room whenever you walk in, and if that doesn't kill him, it adds an absurd amount of lightning damage to your melee attacks. Here's my setup for Nightmare Mode. I did several Countess runs when I first got into Nightmare, but other than that, I didn't waste much time there. My goal at this point was to get to Hell Mode as fast as possible. When I finally got to Hell, I was undergeared, but my Smoke Rune Ward helped with resistances, and I found out that Rockstopper Helmet is really great for staying alive, so I used that. Rockstopper! The official helmet of the 1930s Green Bay Packers. However, my Holy Shock Lightning attacks weren't going to cut it anymore. The Lightning Immunes in Act 2 really started bugging me, so I used another reset to become a Hammerdin. There were times in there where it got dicey, but that's why I don't play hardcore. It was a lot smoother sailing once I found a wizard spike. For my Hellforge, I got not too bad of a rune, and eventually I beat the game in Hell difficulty. After speedrunning my way through every difficulty, I was around level 75, and I was finally able to comfortably clear out Chaos Sanctuary in Hell mode. So I knew it was time to start my Get Rich strategy. My strategy involves constantly making games with a trade proposal as a title. Then I clear out the same few places over and over while I'm waiting on someone to join. Which places? Well I did Countess Council and Chaos over and over again. As a Hammerdon without teleport, you want to get around fast by charging. Make sure to always have concentration on when you're attacking, and get underneath them if you want to hit them point blank with a hammer. Spirals! One thing to remember, River of Flame and Chaos Sanctuary are level 85 areas, which are basically areas with the highest chance of finding the best loot. So clear out all the monsters you can conveniently get to. A lot of people skip over River of Flame, but River of Flame is like a playground for Hammerdens with its wide open areas. My boy Hephaesto has a high chance of dropping runes also. I ended up finding a lot of good runes here on my way to Chaos. And I found some good stuff in Chaos too. And if you see clusters of wraiths or ghosts or wispy boys like this, clear them out because that enemy type has a higher chance of dropping runes. Most of the time they just drop nothing, so I don't hunt them down if it's just one or two of them, but kill big groups of them and make sure they die in a place where you can walk to. If they die out here, they're guaranteed to drop nothing. 
They will test your patience, but one of them dropped an ohm rune for me on the way to the Countess. I wasn't recording most of the time, but I did a quick screen grab every time I got something good. I'm sorry I can't share the full glory of these satisfying moments with you, but to make it up to you, I used state-of-the-art special effects to show you what that drop looked like. And of course, the Countess herself can drop some decent runes in Hell Mode. Quick pro tip, on your way to the Countess, each time you go to a new level, look at the way the entrance hallway is facing. The hallway to the next level will always be facing 90 degrees counterclockwise from the entrance hallway for that level. Basically, whenever you get to a new level, it sends you a certain way. You'll get to the next level faster by going counterclockwise, at least for the Countess. When you take on the Council, the map is the same every time, so that's nice. They drop a lot of gold, and if that starts piling up, then I recommend using it to gamble for a good circlet. I could actually teleport before I got the Enigma, from the staff that has charges on it. There are charges of teleport on these items too, but I believe items with blue titles are usually cheaper to repair. You can get one of these by going to Akara over and over again. Make sure you get one with charges of teleport, and not the boost of the skill. And of course, the cow level is a wide open area, and it's packed pretty densely with cows. It's a decent place for you to literally go and farm. I had pretty bad luck here, so I got impatient and started cutting it for my runs. Also, I tried to do Pindle Skin at first, but I didn't have enough damage reduction to tank hits from his zombie buddies whenever they were charging me. I really don't like dying, so I just did Countess, Council, and Chaos for most of my runs early on. Then, each time I cleared those out, I'd make a new trade proposal game and repeat. Basically, I'm always proposing a trade when I play. I highly recommend you do the same, because if not, if you're only magic finding, you're doing a lot more work than you have to. Let's address the elephant in the room. I'm aware that there's a website dedicated to Diablo trading. I might get in trouble if I say the name of that site, but it rhymes with he who hey sp. I saw plenty of people get enigmas before me, but I'm guessing a lot of them used that website, which I will call that website for the rest of this video. This site has been around for years and it hasn't been shut down yet because it uses its own trading currency, which I will call Floopy Goopies, or FG for short. I wanted to say I didn't use that website at all, and it's true I never made a single transaction on that website, but I realized that, for my strategy, I really needed to see what other people were bidding for the items. Instead of actually trading on that website, I only used it to check the value of my stuff, like a stock market app. So if I had something to trade, I would search for it on that website, and I would find out how much FG the buyers and sellers were asking for it, to give me a ballpark of the value. The value was usually between the buy it now price, and the in search of price. Sometimes, if I clicked on one of the auctions, I could tell how much FG that item sold for, and that would give me a more precise value. Once I had appraised my item's value in FG, I would attempt to trade it for an item that was worth a little bit more FG. My strategy when trading was to make an offer that was between 60 to 100% of the value of what I was asking for. For example, Vex and Nist for Ohm. I was asking for a little more than what I was offering, but it still wasn't a ripoff, so I got the trade. And in between games, I'd take a quick look at other people's trade proposals. Sometimes you'll find a good deal that you can quickly flip a profit on. I see a lot of filthy animals out there making offers of less than 10% of the value of what they're asking for. They're just wasting their time. I know you want to win the lottery, but you'll have more luck if you propose trades that are not an absolute ripoff to the other person. You want that sweet spot where you're just barely ripping off the other person. So that's why I offered between 60 to 100% of the value of what I was asking for. This strategy got me some incredible results. It was an uphill battle because everyone else was making a hammered in two, or a sorceress, so all the items I needed were extra expensive because the demand for them was so high. I knew my work was cut out for me. I know I just gave you an epic speech about making reasonable offers literally 10 seconds ago, but I have to come clean. I made an offer of around 50% when I was asking for a job. I didn't think I was going to get it, and I accidentally fell asleep. When I woke up at 2am, this guy was in my game, and he apparently really needed the stuff I was offering, so he accepted my offer. Job. Finally, I was one huge step closer to getting my goal of the Enigma. Now I only had one thing left, the Bear Rune. I mean, the Bear Rune. I got pretty lucky with the Jaw Rune, so I was ahead of schedule, so to speak, and I made it my goal to focus all my time in the game toward getting an Enigma. Getting an Enigma. I started keeping better track of the moves I made, so I could tell you about how I did it later. At this point my gear was a little sturdier, so I was able to quickly breeze through chaos. I didn't have the best stuff yet, but it got the job done. This setup helped me find some great stuff, which I traded for even better stuff. These trades I'm showing you were done during the first week of the game when the market was all wild, so don't use them as a guide for when you trade. I'm mainly just showing my work here. A lot of times I would make a trade game and then I'd go off and do something else while I was waiting on someone to join. I traded my way up, and eventually I was able to scrounge enough stuff together to afford a burr rune. 
Yes, I got a bear. Finally, I had a jaw and a burr. It was time to make it. The Enigma. The Enigma. What did it cost me? Well, everything. Pretty much the only valuable thing I had left that I was willing to trade at this point was my Skulder's ire, so I did that. I like to think that the Skulder's is out there somewhere right now, helping some guy find magic items. When you think about it, some of these items have gone through so many different owners, I bet some of them have interesting stories. But we can explore that some other time. So, I didn't have any good gear other than the Enigma, right? But now, since I had teleport, I was able to expand my farming runs to most of the best spots. Here's my hit list. The whole shebang takes, I don't know, like 10-15 minutes. And I found some decent stuff in these places. After that day when I got the Enigma, work got crazy, I was traveling, I wanted to watch Squid Game in subtitles, you know. So I've only been able to play like 30 minutes each day, but I can get two or three of these runs done in that time. And after making my Enigma, I did somewhere around 40 of these runs while trading, and then I was fully geared. I'll shut up for a minute and let you just watch how I did it. I need to point out to you that when I said I got the Enigma in 24 hours, I didn't count the time I spent tabbed out of the game watching TV and stuff while I waited on trades. I actually needed that time in order for some of those trades to land. If I included AFK time, it'd probably be a lot more than 24 hours, but I did this in less than 24 hours of actually being in the game playing. Yeah, I got lucky on the trade for Jaw, and yeah, I got lucky by finding a couple low runes. But my point is, the faster you can clear these higher level places, and the wiser you are with your trade proposals, the luckier you get. At first I was undecided on whether I liked Andariel. I was ready to talk some smack about her in this video, but then she dropped a low rune and my opinion of her changed. You know, she may have goat legs, Vegeta's hairdo, and Kerrigan's wings if they had biceps, but she's clearly comfortable in her own skin. She's so confident. <laughs> See? She says that all the time. She's just an absolute treasure to be around. I got a bunch of keys doing all these runs, so I used those keys to kill the Ubers a couple times with my cousin. He saw my Hammerdin video, and he decided to be a Hammerdin too. And neither of us had all the gear we needed to do Ubers, but we just went for it. I used a majority of that stuff I showed you, and I had a wand with charges of life tap, so I was on life tap duty. And I kind of dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honestly, Diablo, yeah. how many how many pit wards do you need? <laughs> At least a thousand. Apparently. Yeah, he's like, I need my whole posse here. Wait, what the? In full honesty, we died a few times, but we did manage to get some underwhelming torches out of it, which I promptly traded. I got a Malrune for one, which I traded for this awesome ethereal armor. Might have overpaid a little bit for that, but I took that armor and socketed it. Socketed it? I socketed it and put fortitude into it. Using that low rune I was telling you about, that Andy dropped because she's a sweet, sweet angel. <laughs> what a delightful woman. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, I gave that amazing fortitude to my mercenary. And now he's an unstoppable force that goes by the name of Durga. Durga's a holy freeze mercenary, and I'm starting to like those best because they slow down enemies. Oddly enough, the last piece of Hammerdin gear I got was the thing that should have been the easiest. For my setup, I needed to roll a perfect 35 FCR on this spirit shield, which is a 1 in 11 chance, but it took me 28 tries. If you want to see the full video of all 28 tries condensed into 2 minutes set to this song, then you can. That video exists. 
So now I'm fully geared except for the Annihilus. But you'll have to cut me some slack on that one. The Annihilus is currently pretty hard to get. It would require a level of coordination, diligence, and great sacrifice that I do not possess at this moment. None of my stuff is perfect, but I don't need perfect. My fully geared Hammerden at level 91 hits the 125 cast speed breakpoint, so he launches 2.8 hammers per second. Each hammer does roughly 11,000 damage. That's 30,000 damage per second everywhere on that spiral that the hammers fly in. He has over 2,600 hit points. Oh wait. I mean he has over 3,200 hit points. And check this out, he ended up having 666 mana. It fits the Diablo theme. If the stats don't convince you then, I mean just look at this guy. He looks so epic if you ignore his ridiculous hat. So were there problems with my strategy? Oh yeah. I made a couple of dumb trades in there. But the biggest missed opportunity was that I played with the meta, meaning I did what everyone else always does. You see, everyone knows that Hammerdens and Sorceresses are top tier at finding good items, especially on a budget. That's the meta. So during the first weeks, everyone wants the best Hammerden items, and you'll have to negotiate harder to get those items. The get rich Hammerden strategy is always a fantastic one, but I could have taken advantage of the chaos during the first couple of weeks of the game to get rich even faster. The market is way different at the beginning of the season than at the end. So if I had started with a less popular class, basically anything besides a Sorceress or Paladin, I would have been able to gear up a lot faster and I could have farmed stuff that paladins and sorcerers have a harder time with, to really get the upper hand when trading. Yeah, it would have still taken a while to get Enigma, but I could have gotten some much better trade deals along the way. All in all, I still think my Hammerdin strategy was a fantastic one. Yeah, the market was competitive during the first couple of weeks when I recorded this, but Hammerdins are so brutally fast and resilient that with a little bit of strategy, I was able to get fully geared incredibly fast for the amount of time I spent playing. So, in summary, if you want to replicate my results and quickly get fully geared, all you have to do is one thing, get lucky. By that I mean, quickly give yourself many opportunities to get lucky to maximize the returns over the time you spend playing the game. And in order to do that, you want to speed through normal and nightmare difficulties and level up so you can get to hell difficulty, then clear out whatever level 85 areas and bosses you can do quickly. If you're hammered in, do Chaos Council and Countess runs there, try to do them quickly and frequently. If you're playing on Battle.net, each time you go on these runs, make the game's title a trade proposal and try to trade some of your stuff. Let the game name do some of your work for you. And check that website before you make the trade proposal so you know you're not ripping yourself off. And so you know you're not asking for something ridiculous that no one in their right mind would agree to. Again, I recommend offering between 60 to 100% of the value of the item you're trying to get, based on that website's currency values. And finally, when you get Enigma, you can add a lot more places to your hit list, and that will give you an even bigger variety of great stuff to gear up your account with. This video was a little less structured than my normal material, because I figured that showing you my journey would be the best way to help you with yours. Follow those steps, and you'll be able to get Enigma in 24 hours too. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, eh, this guy's a fool, I got Enigma way faster than that. Then tell me how you got yours in the comments. I'll probably read it. As always, if I got anything wrong, I'll make a note of it in the video description. Happy hunting!